Good morning. I wanted to follow up on the last uh, month and just communication with you or lack of communication. Um, like, I've been trying non stop to contact you, voicemails, pictures of me with Ethan, writing to you every day, requesting just a call with Ethan. Um, trying to share things with him and it looks like now it looks like with the one tick it looks like you've cut me off if you haven't blocked me and it's just a temporary connection thing then I apologize for jumping to conclusions but it it doesn't look good and this action you're taking it at best it looks unpleasant at worst it looks somewhat sinister and it's really, it's not a wholesome, it's not a good action. And I don't know what's going on with you. I don't know what's going on with your life. Um, and I'm a big believer that I know that everyone's struggling in life and you're dealing with things that I don't know about. And I'm sorry for that. And my priority, I want Ethan to be happy and live a full and um, fruitful life and I want you to be in a happy place whatever that takes whether it's finding a partner whether it's finding your dream job whether it's finding a new house whether it, just opening yourself to find some love inside yourself but I know that by cutting me off and not replying to me I know that that's absolutely nothing actually to do with me because I can see these traits from the past inside myself I know that by taking this action by taking this negative standpoint and cutting me off like this, this is because you're dealing with things inside of yourself that you don't want to deal with. Whatever that those fears are, whatever those traumas are, I know they're present. I recognize that in myself. It doesn't make me better than you. We're all just struggling through life in our own way. And like I said, my priority is connecting with Ethan. And all I've been asking is a 10 minute call once a week with him as his father and he is my son. And that will be until the end of our days. Um, and I want to be a beautiful father to him. I want to connect with him. I want to talk with him. I want to laugh with him. I, I, I want that connection that, you know, is present with us here on earth, you know. He is as much part of me as he is part of you. And no matter what you do, no matter what you think, cutting me off, it doesn't make any difference. And what I do not want is for you to choose this action from this place of fear and negativity within yourself to cut me off like this for no reason. I've only ever been positive, provided for Ethan, give money for Ethan, give love to Ethan. Every time I see him, I'm full of love. I enjoy the time with him. He enjoys the time with me. There's never been one I ought to have negativity or malpractice or anything bad with me and Ethan. Together, we're perfect. We've always been perfect. What I do not want is for you to choose this route for whatever reasons you have, please talk to me about it. I know you're not a very forthcoming person with regards to talking. And it's always been that way. And that's fine. That's the way you are. If that's how you want to be, that's totally fine. I forgive you. I love you. That's fine. But I do not want time to go by. And in time, Ethan has questions and questions. And he'll always have questions. And he'll come to me no matter when that is. And I do not want him to turn against you. I do not want him to resent you for doing this. But believe me, it, it could happen. I would do everything in my power for him to, to, for that not to happen. I want him to love you. I want him to cherish you as his mother. You've been amazing for him. He's been in your life. You know, you... You've got the closest connection and I don't want anything to come between that. I don't want me to come between that. I don't want anything to come between that. I never want any problems there. But if you choose this action, he could resent you for this. You have to see that. You have to open your mind and open your heart and realize that this is possible. 
to happen because all I'm asking is that I have a regular call with him. It's so simple, it's such a small thing, and yet you seemingly refuse this, you don't answer my messages, you don't want this contact with him, and that's coming from a fears inside yourself, insecurities inside yourself. I remember when I used to come to your house and I don't know, it's seemingly you've been running your whole life. I was running. That's why when we were together, we were both running from our minds. We couldn't talk to each other. We were both full of fears. I see that. When I came to your house, I would see um, how I would be with Pete and your mum. And not once would any of you ever mention your father, God rest his soul, since his passing. And it showed to me, maybe you've never grieved him. Maybe, you know, it was like he never existed. But, you know, the fish tank was there. The garden was there. The pond, his models in that room. It was like he never left. It was like he'd never gone. And it was like none of you ever wanted to deal with his passing. And God rest his soul. I'm sure he was a beautiful man. And my heart goes out to you all. But by cutting off and being this closed book, and I understand your mother's that way, I understand many people are that way, and I understand why you are the way you are. I am the way I am because of my mother and father pr primarily, but I've been working deep on myself with meditation, with plant medicines in as many ways as possible to try and heal myself from my sick mind. We're generally very sick in society, as people, as a collective. This is the way it is. And this is the way I've been and I'm trying bit by bit to become better, more open-minded, more loving, more compassionate. And I want to talk and that is where, why I'm at this point with Ethan right now. And I realise that we're just souls passing through this body in a very short space of time. We will all die. We will all leave this body. And then what? And then what? We have to try our best to become the best people we can be in this moment, right here, right now. How can I do that? I can reach out to you. I can say, I love you. You're Ethan's mother. I want to connect with you. I want to connect with Ethan. I want to love him in the way I can. Yes, I live in Germany, but what can I do right now? I can have regular contact with him. I can speak with him. And I want to continue giving money for his support. I want to continue to connect with him in the best way possible. But what you're doing, you're backing me in a corner, you're pushing me away like this. How do you expect me to pay your money for Ethan's support when I can't even speak to him? I will give money to him, but I will, I, I'm happy to give money to him. And then he'll get this later in life. Put cryptocurrency on this Ledger Nano. It will make two or three times the amount. It's more beneficial to him to have that money when it comes back to him two or three times fold in the future then just have it now. Going, going, going. I know you said you couldn't support him if you don't get the money from me, but I actually don't really believe that. I just believe that what you're doing is that you're going to... One thing I believe is that you're a wonderful mother. In my heart, I believe you're a wonderful mother. I've only ever seen that you want the best for Ethan. That's beautiful. And he won't go short. If I put money on this and he gets it later down the line, uh, as I would do regular payments, I can I can put it into cryptocurrency and that's fine. That would be more beneficial to him in his life than by me giving me the money now and not putting money on the ledger, I know. And what's going to happen now is by you taking this action, you're going to sacrifice some of uh, your disposable income and have to put it towards Ethan now. Either way... I, what do I want? I want regular contact with Ethan as I've been asking for weeks and weeks and months and actually years. And I accept whatever your decision is. If you want to completely cut me off, if you don't want me to have access to Ethan and speak with him, then I forgive you. With my heart open, I forgive you and I love you and you're Ethan's mother. And you're a big part of our lives and you always will be. And I'm here and I'm always here until the end of my days here on earth. I will be here for Ethan in whatever capacity I can be. And that's the truth. And I've always said that. And I've always said I'm here to speak to openly. I'm an open book. You can ask me anything. I'll speak openly about anything. I just want you and Ethan to be happy and 
I want that connection with him. And if I don't have it, I don't have it. I accept that. But in time, Ethan will come to me and we'll have the most beautiful relationship. I know that in my heart. For that is truth. And truth cannot be suppressed. So thank you for your time. And yeah, sending lots of love. And I hope we can resolve this situation. And I hope you find space in your heart to, to hear what I'm saying. And hopefully it can resound with you in some way. Um, but this is all coming from a place of love, actually. This is coming from a place of love. And I've spent time in contemplation and I'm just doing my best. So all I ask with my heart open is that you can do your best for Ethan as well. And recognize that contact with me as his father is the best for Ethan as well. So I just I just hope that you choose the right the right that you make the right choice. Otherwise I feel like it could come back so strongly with trauma for him. You know? The absent father trauma, it could come so strongly with him. And we're gonna have to work work deeply and to really help him in the future, if that's so. But find the love. Okay, take care of yourself. Hope to hear from you soon.